Hello everyone, Richard here, back again for another diecast review for the diecast F1 review. <laughs> and here we are looking at the McLaren Mercedes from 1995, the uh, McLaren MP410. And uh, in 1 18th scale of course. Built by, or made by, Paul's Model Arts, now known as Mini Champs. And I have to say, this is one of my favourite models. It is very solid and uh, very well put together, except the uh, rear... Well, the, the mid-wing there. That's also one of my favourite McLarens as well. It's uh, iconic to look at. It's um, well, it's an iconic look anyway. Nobody ever copied it because uh, it was so either revolutionary or it was just plain shit. But anyway, I know a lot of people moan or complain about it because of the ugly shape of the nose and also the uh, engine cover, the uh, sort of a shark fin, which we didn't really see again until 2008. But the shark fin and also the uh, mid-mounted wing there. Uh, well, that's one of the uh, downsides to this model, actually, that wing. Cause it is, although it held on quite well, the uh, decal is, on oh, what well, decal on it is quite uh, fragile. But a uh, quick low down of the car in its, uh, well, in real life anyway, it's, uh, of course, ran in the 1995 season. It was the first car to have the Mercedes-Benz engine after a pretty torrid year with Peugeot in 1994, which at every other race it pretty much blew up. Uh, so yeah, they went ahead with Mercedes-Benz and held on to that contract, or that uh, partnership till 2014, and we're now, of course now the McLaren Honda again. And I bet they're glad they went with Honda because their results are brilliant. Very tongue-in-cheek moment there. But anyway, a rundown of the car. It never had any real performance. It's yeah, slow in development and also pretty slow on the racetrack. It was originally designed to have Nigel Mansell at the wheel, but of course he was being too, well, him being too big at the time, he couldn't fit in the car, so Mark Blundell had to sit in for the first two races of 95, and Mansell came in for two races, finished one in 10th place, and then promptly retired the second uh, second race because well, it's just undrivable, he said. But enough about that, of course Mark Blundell took over for the rest of the season. Of course, Mika Hakkinen in the other car had a much better season, although compared to 94, it was pretty dire. Two second places, Italy and I think Japan, but pretty bland results throughout the rest of the season. And also a near fatal accident in the Australian Grand Prix practice as well. He cr ended up cracking his skull and ended up, ended up uh, comatose for a little while, but of course, he's, he's alright now. Two world championships later on, he was very, <laughs> much better. Um, but yeah, the car wasn't brilliant on performance anyway. They also revised the chassis a little bit throughout the year as well. I think from Canada onwards they uh, got rid of the uh, engine cover and uh, just had, well, got rid of the, the shark fin anyway and just went with a normal slope design which you see on most, well, the rest of the cars that year. I think they may have brought it back for the Pacific Grand Prix um, and maybe Japan as well but I'm not sure. doesn't really matter anyway. But uh, onto the model itself. It is an absolute stunner. Also rolls quite well, although that's not important. It's uh, made by PMA or Paul's Model Arts, as it says on the bottom. It's also what well, basically made mini champs now, and let's look on the bottom. Paul's Model Arts, McLaren MP410. That's all you need to know. That's all that's actually written on the bottom as well. Of course, this model is the Mika Hakkinen variety or the Mika Hakkinen version. Quite a rare model as well, especially if you go for the uh, Nigel Mansell version. It usually tends to go for heaps of money on uh, eBay. And also it tends to go for a lot of money when people uh, add tobacco advertising. Instead of having the McLaren, they put the proper Marlboro on there as well. So it also ups the value as well. And also if you can get one in a box as well, it's pretty valuable as well. Mine doesn't actually have a box. I bought mine about seven years ago without a box. But uh, it's alright. It sits in the cabinet quite nicely. Just needs a bit of a clean. Um, also another fault with my model anyway. I don't know if anyone else, else has this problem. But the, the decal on the mid-wing there. Uh, that one fell off about a week after I got it. It just dried out and just flaked off. So what I'd done, I printed one out onto some photo paper and stuck it back on. But uh, it looked good at the time, but it's also faded a bit. Now, as you can see, compared to the orange on the rear wing, it's uh, gone pink. So it may need replacing. But uh, it looked pretty good at the time. And I'm getting fingerprints all over it, which is, really doesn't help. Material-wise, it is pretty good. When I reviewed that Benetton 186, it was basically metal to from nose to monocoque, and then the rest was plastic. But this, it's very much metal, apart from the wings, of course. The front wing held on very nicely. I just love the tight packaging around the rear of the car. If you look, you see the very nice shape of the car, very nicely sculpted. As I compare it to today, it isn't very much obsolete. But that's what you get for a 20-year-old car. Oh, nearly dropped it. 
Also the very pointed nose as well. Very pointed. Oh, the paint chip on the nose. I didn't realise that. Bloody paint chipped. Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, well, never mind. Something to moan about later on. But, uh, that's really put me off now. Oh, well. Never mind. But anyway, um, also it's structured. It's quite uh, stiff as well. The uh, suspension is very nice as well. The steering is very very tight as well, which I like on a car. Shows the quality of the suspension. It ain't going to fall apart. I have got another model which, which fits uh, the Benetton B196 I've got. It has very, very loose suspension. It just feels like it's going to fall apart. It really is worrying, but uh, I'll get to that on another review another day. But uh, I'll a quick review around the car. I will get a turntable for this thing, so I don't have to keep sliding it across the desk. But uh, I could just get a plate and put it on there. But uh, it is a very nice model. And price wise, you're going to pay. I'm not really sure. It, it, it does vary. Depending on who you want driving for it, because the Mansell models you tend to go for about 100, 120 pounds. The last one I saw sold for about 150, but that also had Marlboro decals on it. So um, it's sort of touch and go with this model as well. Um, it is quite rare as well. So when you do see them come up and you really want one, you know, just go for it and then uh, worry about the price tag later on. But. Uh, it is one of my favourites. Also, I've got a few paint chips on the barge board as well. And they're a bit, they're plastic as well, but they're very solid, very solidly fit on. They don't feel like they're going to snap or anything like that. And the rear wing, the rear wing is a bit loose, as you'd expect. The rear the wing up on top is quite solid, but the rear wing is quite loose. It does, it is quite thin plastic, and it's only got one mounting point in the middle. The background's falling apart. And the wing mirrors, also another thing which tend to worry me on these models. They have very solid on this car as well. You tend to find this car for sale without wing mirrors and usually without that middle decal on the back there or without the wing completely. But uh, overall a very nice car. I do like the uh, the wheel rims that McLaren used at the time, these star-shaped uh, rims at the, on the uh, car. Also Goodyear tyres, the sign of the times. And of course on the rear, very nicely done. And I have to say it is one of my favourite cars even though in reality it was a bag of shit. I'm not sure as well if this thing actually had a T-cam on the top as well. There is a hole on the top of the uh, roll hoop where I think a T-cam may have fitted, but I'm not sure. I have to have a look at some other ones. Maybe that's just... I uh, know oh that's there. because There's a slot in the top of the engine cover as well. It's not a real slot, it's just painted black. But it's, it's where the, uh, uh, the FIA said that it had to be a hole in the top of the engine cover to uh, reduce engine power. But uh, I don't know what this hole's for. Maybe that is a T cam, or maybe it's just there for the same as that one there. I don't, I'm not sure. But uh, never mind. And also, we've got the uh, sculpted bottom as well for the '95 season. Of course, there would well, you know it's a wooden plank there, but it's, of course it's plastic. And also the uh, diffuser as well. And we do another quick loop around. McLaren on the rear wing, and also the large diffuser. And yeah, it's a very nice car. So that's basically my summary of the car. It is one of my favourites, and it is very well put together. Uh, you will find a few versions around which have been mistreated quite badly. Also, another thing is when uh, you get a... If this thing is subject to uh, smoke it, a person who smokes, then the, the uh, decals on the nose and around the mob, uh, McLaren and the Mercedes will tend to fade yellow. It, it does, or, or even brown in some extreme cases. I have got a McLaren in the cabinet. Uh, a red and white one for a 96 with all the decals is really badly yellowed because of uh, nicotine abuse by the previous owner. I won't say who it was, but it wasn't me. <laughs> anyway, it, it did ruin it, but uh, this one's survived quite well, even though it's not in a box. It just sits in my cabinet, and uh, yeah, it is a very nice model. So that's basically my summary. I also don't have the box for it, but uh, never mind. There's a bit of fading on the rear wing. It is slightly yellowing, just around the uh, front part of the engine cover, but no big deal. But anyway, like I said, just my summary and my opinion of it. I will give it about a 7 out of 10, because it is a very nice car. And just another turn. I will get a turntable and proper gloves, because I don't want to get fingerprints all over it all the time. But uh, yeah, it is a very nice car, a very nice model, and I will recommend getting it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. I can't think of anything else. 
anyway, very nice. I will say, keep, yeah, we'll keep saying that is very nice. It does have that very nice shape that uh, I had that year. So yeah. Anyway, this is uh, Richard here signing off, logging off, and disappearing. And I shall return with another review for the diecast F1 review. So uh, bye for now.